Today, we're taking a look at the Pantheon and the densest water cooling setup I've ever built. We've got three 280 radiators from AlphaCool, six of Noctra's brand new 140mm G2 Chrome X black fans, a Ryzen 7 9900X3D CPU with the Mod Ultra Lobo on top, and the thinnest water block in the world, the Mod Ultra Wobo 40 4090 Founders Edition. The case was developed by five council members of the SFF Hub Discord server in tight collaboration with 3FC, the designer behind the hugely successful Form T1. The outfit is called Perseus Cases, and the Pantheon is their very first case. Design-wise, I find it to be one of the most stunning cases I've ever laid my eyes on. There's exquisite attention to detail everywhere you look, and that's honestly impressive considering that the unit they sent over is a prototype. But this isn't just your run-of-the-mill sandwich-style case with just a larger volume. This is a small form factor liquid cooling dream case. Among its prime features, we have of course the ability to fit up to three 280 radiators or a single 280 all-in-one liquid cooler thanks to the flippable spine. It also features sideways PSU mounting, which ensures that the heat from the power supply is sent outside of the case through the ventilated front fascia. Looking at the rear panel, we have interchangeable rear plates, and I see lots of potential here for modding and future compatibility without needing to redesign the entire panel. But it's one thing to have all these features on paper, it's entirely another to design a case that delivers on its promises. And with the Pantheon, you can just tell that it was built from the ground up with liquid cooling in mind. It feels like ample thought was given not just to where you're supposed to end up, but to the actual build process. There is, however, one caveat when it comes to maxing out the Pantheon's liquid cooling potential, and I'll be covering that later on in the video when we get to thermal testing. For now, let's take a look at the construction of the case. As you could see in the montage, we are dealing with a sandwich layout with a center spine connecting the front and back panels. Like the Form T1, the spine is adjustable, with GPU chamber support ranging from one slot up to a four slot in half slot increments. A very clever design touch, and perhaps my favorite, are the fan radiator steel brackets, which double as structural beams once attached to the case. It's a very efficient design, both from a cost optimization perspective, but also when it comes to making the most out of the available volume. When you're building or planning out a custom loop, the ease of adding and removing radiator assemblies is extremely important. For my custom loop, I'll be running the case in the one slot GPU mode. And that's only because I wanted to do one more build with the 4090 Founders Edition featuring the incredible Mod Ultra Wobo. I'll be running this 4090 at stock settings as a sort of stand in for an undervolted 5090. Power draw will be more or less in the same ballpark, giving us a solid idea of just how well the Pantheon can handle a 5090 build. I've done two undervolting videos with 5090s, one with the Founders Edition and one with the Astral and I stand by undervolting as the best way to run these cards, regardless of whether we're talking small form factor or not. Sticking with the Mod Ultra theme, we have the Mod Ultra Lobo pump and CPU block combo unit serving as the heart of the loop, all while providing excellent cooling for the 9800X3D CPU. The entire loop features pneumatic fittings and tubing, which are my go-to for small form factor builds. They are super easy to work with and save a ton of space compared to traditional water cooling tubing. For the power supply, I am using the Corsair SF1000 attached in the sideways orientation to make use of the front PSU exhaust feature. Custom cables are essential though, I've used the same lengths as in my Form T1 builds, and they worked fairly well, but the motherboard and GPU ones could be made even shorter. My aim with the cable runs here was to keep everything as contained as possible, 
and I really like the way it turned out and how compact everything looks in this layout. Now, let me tell you about what the Perseus team calls the rear assembly. Essentially, it's a collection of specific water cooling parts that enable quick filling and draining of the loop via quick disconnects, and it's an integral part of a triple radiator setup. It's made out of two five-way cubes, a variable extender, a check valve that only allows liquid to flow into one direction, and some extension fittings. For my rear assembly, I swapped one of the extenders for a coolant temperature sensor, mostly because I just couldn't find a better spot for it. The quick disconnects intended to be used with the rear assembly are coolant's QD3s, which simply thread into the rear assembly cubes through the rear panel. Printed inserts can be used to protect the rear panel from scratches and ensure a snug fit, or you could just use O-rings for a similar result. While the rear assembly might seem like an over-engineered solution, it more than pays for itself in time saved when filling or draining the loop. Next on the list was preparing the radiator assemblies. Each assembly is a sandwich of the radiator, two 140mm fans, and the radiator brackets, of course. It's worth mentioning here that the Pantheon is designed around Alphacool's HP20 radiators. Thicker radiators than these simply won't fit in the Pantheon. With the new 140G2 fans from Noctua, you'll also need 30mm long screws instead of the included 28mm screws. The reason for this is that Noctua recommends against removing the load relief gaskets when attaching fans in a push configuration. So the setup I've settled on for my triple rad loop is as follows. One radiator acting as a bottom intake with the fans in push configuration, one radiator as top exhaust with the fans in pull configuration, and the third side radiator acting as intake with the fans in push configuration. All the radiators are closest to the inside of the case, and that's done simply as a way to keep cables and tubing out of getting into the fan blades. I won't go into detail about how each specific tubing run is routed, as things here are honestly a bit hard to follow even for me, and I'm the one who built the thing. When you are dealing with three radiators plus the rear assembly, it's a lot to keep track of, especially when it comes to making sure flow direction is respected. The symmetrical tubing runs from the GPU are probably the most important ones in the whole build. They are needed to get the tubing runs over to the other side of the case, but I admit they are also an aesthetic choice as well. The result, I feel, is really nice, a good balance between looks and practicality. Without any panels on, it looks like it's all just radiator and fans, with the 4090 water block on display on the GPU side. With the rear assembly and an external pump, filling the loop is a breeze, but I do realize that having this sort of setup lying around, not to mention a way to power a D5 pump externally, is not exactly a beginner-friendly setup. Anyway, let's actually take a look at how this build performs. I've set all six fans to about 960 RPM, which gave me a loudness reading of 39 decibels, measured at 50 centimeters from the front panel. For the first test, I ran my usual Star Wars Outlaws soak test at 4K for 30 minutes. Average GPU power draw is around 385 watts, 40 watts or so lower than what I get on my undervolted 5090 in this exact test scenario. So looking at the log starting with GPU thermals, it looks like we top out at around 60 degrees. On the CPU, we settle around 62 degrees, and the coolant temperature, arguably the most important one for liquid cooling, tops out at 44 degrees. I also ran a one hour session playing Arc Raiders, again with stock settings on the GPU and the same fan speeds as before. The coolant temperature never once exceeded 42 degrees, GPU temperature stayed in the 55 to 58 degree range, and CPU temperatures hit a ceiling of 70 degrees. All in all, a very good result. In a 10 minute Cinebench test, the 1900X3D topped out at 80.5 degrees, a result that's actually comparable to the Noctua D15 Gen 1 results I got in my previous video with the Loki R1. Now, this result was achieved with a pump speed of about 2400 RPM, and thus we get to my major gripe with liquid cooled builds that feature DDC pumps, and that's pump noise. Because this custom loop is relatively complex and the parts used are more restrictive than usual, the pump needs to run at quite high RPM. The general wisdom in regards to flow rate is that there's a certain Goldilocks zone. Too low and the water blocks become ineffective at cooling, and too high and we basically get no benefit. Take a look at these results running Cinebench at different pump speeds, which perfectly illustrates what I mean. 
The sweet spot seems to be somewhere around 2400 RPM. 3300 is within margin of error difference, so there's no real point running the pump harder. Ideally, I'd want to run this pump at something like 1600 RPM for acceptable noise, but unfortunately cooling effectiveness starts going down pretty fast as RPM is reduced. One upcoming pump design I'm hopeful might become the new small form factor GOAT is the AlphaCool DDC0, which promises exceptionally quiet operation, but of course we'll have to wait and see. Other than that, for the time being at least, there really isn't a better option. Maybe a D5 pump, but making room for that would require giving up that third radiator. Which got me wondering, is that third radiator really doing much? Considering how tightly packed everything is inside, it might not even be that effective in the first place. So I performed some surgery to get the third radiator out and patch the remaining tubing runs together. I kept the side fans as intake, just like before, just no more radiator. How much hotter do you guys think the coolant is going to get, running with just two radiators? If you'd like to make a prediction, now would be a good time to pause the video and leave a comment down below. So first up, the 30 minute soak test in Star Wars Outlaws. Let's have a look at the log. Coolant temperature is maxing out at 43 degrees, one degree lower than before. That's very interesting. I personally expected a small difference in favor of the triple rad setup, perhaps indicating a sort of diminishing returns, but this is a really unexpected result. There's a 1 degree difference in GPU temperature as well, consistent with the coolant temperature difference. CPU temperatures seem to be the only exception here, running 3 to 4 degrees higher. If I had to find an explanation, I would say that this is maybe due to a difference at the CPU block inlet. Previously, there were essentially two radiators before the coolant got to the CPU block. It may also be just run-to-run -run variants, so let's run the other soak test as well. After one hour of game time in Arc Raiders, we get an identical result, one degree lower on the coolant temperature sensor and a similar story for GPU temperatures. CPU temperatures are again slightly higher, so there's definitely something going on there, but not to the point that I'd be concerned. For me, this seems pretty clear. For future Pantheon builds, I would definitely go for a two radiator setup and use the extra space differently, maybe to run something like a Mod Ultra Low 1 UES as a standalone pump, and a dedicated CPU block, or just use the extra space for hardline tubing runs, or indeed a D5 pump with a reservoir. I'm going to be definitely exploring different build ideas in the Pantheon whenever the final production run comes out. I also redid my pump RPM tests to see if flow rate was better without that third rad, but there wasn't really a significant improvement compared to before, indicating that at least that third radiator is not adding that much flow restriction. The big question with a custom loop like this is if it's worth doing in the first place. The answer is that a custom liquid cooling setup is never worth it from a cost-benefit perspective. It's as clear-cut as that. For me, it's about the build process and the tinkering, especially with exotic hardware. The Pantheon is the perfect case for that. The 18-liter volume I think is just right. It's not too small that liquid cooling becomes inferior to air cooling and not too big that it no longer really qualifies as small foam factor. I'd say it's right at that edge, at least for me personally. And for a prototype, there are very little shortcomings. Panel fit could be a bit better, the top and bottom panels were a bit of a tight fit, and one of my side panels has a bit of a bulge, despite nothing inside actually pushing against it. There are also a few production blemishes, but nothing that should be an issue with proper quality control. Setting the correct slot for the spine is probably the most confusing part of building the Pantheon, but a proper manual and instructions should take care of that. In terms of final production run changes, I'm told it's only going to be some small quality of life things and some fit adjustments. An actual production run of course has its own set of challenges, but I'm really rooting for this case to achieve the success it deserves. There's no official price yet though, or indeed a release date. The best place to stay up to date is the Perseus Cases Discord, for which I'll have a link in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and if you'd like to support the channel, check out my Patreon linked in the description below. There you can find my fan control configs and my custom RDSS overlay. Thanks a lot for watching, bye for now.